welcome to today's edition of Pegasus Test. On today's edition, we're dyeing the British Osprey vest. If you watched my previous video on this, you saw what a great deal it was from Vostalaika, and at $42, I couldn't pass it up. Yeah. Also, the fact British DPM Desert works like crap in Virginia because there's no deserts here. <laughs> so I came up with a cunning plan that we're going to dye this. And when I want something OD, I go to the god of OD. This man lives, eats, and breathes OD. It's his favorite color. And his other favorite color is colors he can dye OD. That's true. That's <laughs> absolutely true. So we're working with Dr. Larson today to get this dyed into a color that it's actually usable here in Virginia. All right. And as you can see here in the One Shepherd Arms Room, Doc's not lying. He lives, eats, and breathes OD. Okay, so a big trick uh, in getting you know, dyeing anything, frankly, is getting the right recipe. And you can find OD Green recipes for RIT dye. You can find this all over online. Um, I say cautious. Uh, be cautious just a little bit here. They are true and accurate, but it may not be the exact OD green that you want. There's different colors and shades of OD green. So the recipe that I have found, and I'm going to tell you the recipe and then tell you that I've doubled it for the size of vat that I am using here. The recipe is one bottle of Kelly green dye. One bottle with a half bottle of sunshine orange. Again, this is RIT dye liquid forms. One bottle of Kelly Green, half bottle of sunshine orange, and you get an OD green there, but it's not quite dark enough. It doesn't look, it looks a little too cheery, to be honest, um, for my military, U.S. military sense of uh, sensibilities. And so I want to darken it up, and people say, oh, well, you grab the chocolate uh, or what's known as dark brown sometimes called chocolate brown depending on which version of rip dye you get and the dark green okay well sure that's fine but be very very careful here because this chocolate um, dark brown wants to dominate everything so if I'm using a whole bottle of um, Kelly green which is a light green and a half bottle of sunshine orange then I want to use no more no more than a quarter bottle, less is preferred, on the dark brown, and then a quarter bottle of the dark green. And I find that a quarter bottle or less of the dark brown, a quarter bottle of the dark green, mixed with the other two, combine all four of those at, at the numbers that I'm telling you, and, um, and you'll get a good uh, military good looking OD green. And I'll, I'll show you a cheater's way of uh, hand, uh, looking at that, testing it. All right, so I have my tongs, and re remember, you want a stainless steel, or you know, you can use aluminum. It'll it'll probably stain it a little bit. What you don't want to do is don't want to use Mama's good pot, right? Mama's good pot or Mama's expensive um, tongs. I've got some like I don't know Walmart special tongs here. Probably cost me all of three dollars, and. I've got this great big, what is this, this is a 10 gallon pot? Something like that. Yeah, I mean it's, it's a huge pot and I've probably got about a third of the way full. So it's on a hot plate because heat, as we'll talk about, is really critical here. But again, the, the important thing is you use stainless steel or, um, or aluminum because you don't want to just stain the crap out of everything. Uh, and or just a dedicated pot, then you really don't care, right? Uh, some people like enamel, color, uh, coated uh, metal, and all this other stuff. Um, but anyway, I'm stirring this on a hot plate, and you're trying to get it up to a certain heat. You can check the temperatures according to what you are dyeing. Are you dyeing polymer? Are you dyeing, you know, uh, nylon? Are you dyeing polyester? Or, or are you dyeing in natural materials like cotton and silk? and wool. Those are quite different and when you do that you want a different fixing agent, something like uh, salt. Whereas when you're dyeing the man-made materials you can use a vinegar for a fixing agent but I found that it's you know it's redundant. Uh, it's not really so necessary in most cases. Anyway, so here we are we're heating it up and I said you want to heat it up to a certain temperature. You don't want to bring it to boil. Boil can not only damage your material but it can also make the dye not work as effectively. But it won't work cold either. You want it good and hot, and you want to keep it that heat. So that's why I'm using a, a very safe electrical um, 
uh, you know, electric plate, a heating plate underneath this, and you see that it's balanced. It's not balanced that precariously, but it is balanced here. And I hold it, so I hold it when I stir, and I'm going to stir. Now, the way I said the cheater weight, we're going to have a test pilot with a piece of material that we're using that isn't that important to us. Less is going to provide us with a grenade pouch that he doesn't care about. And, um, and then what happens is I stir with these things. You can take just any piece of white cloth and you can kind of see the color you're going to get right there. It's going to be that darker, um, it's going to be that darker color here. It looks like little stains. And that's not accurate. Don't think, oh, that's perfect. That's exactly the color. This might be darker, or chances are it's actually going to be lighter than what it actually comes out. But this is a good cheater way of looking at it. And you see what I'm saying? I wanted a much more drab, a much more brown, uh, darker looking military green rather than the cheerful, you know, what they were calling OD green, which just looked a little too cheery for me. All right, so that's where we are, and we'll see how this comes out now. Okay, so for our test pilot here, what we're going to do is to use this. It's a 40 millimeter uh, grenade pouch from the British uh, PLC, I think is what they call it. Osprey. Yeah, the Osprey system here. And you can see that it's the desert um, DPM. DPM. Um, so here we go. We've got one that we're going to show side by side when we're done with this test. But uh, again, we want to do something like, it can be a small piece of material. In this case, we have a whole entire pouch. Why not use that? And we're going to drop that in, uh, into the vat. And uh, now that it's warm enough, or so we believe, and that's, again, the critical piece is keeping this warm. Two things. We take this in clean as possible, and it's pretty darn clean, uh, as you saw. We're going to dump this in. I'm going to swish it around for a while, and uh, because you want to do two things. You want to keep the, the vat water warm, uh, very warm, very warm, but not boiling. boiling. If it ever goes, starts to boil, quickly turn that down. And then the other thing is you want to periodically agitate this. So I think this is going to show us some really cool stuff because the inside of this is like this uh, vinyl, right? It's like a PVC vinyl on uh, tan on the inside, and it probably won't die at all through this, okay? But the outside is the nylon, which will and should die if we've got this going correctly. So I'm just gonna periodically uh, stir this and just make sure it stays hot. Um, again, when I talk about the heat, one of the things you have to keep in mind is every time I, you get this to a certain temperature, right? And every time I introduce more material, say I want to shove just that entire set of uh, web gear in here, that of course is going to cool off the material. And so you have to keep that constant heat going. I've never seen it where you can just get it to the right temperature, throw everything in, and then back off from it because you're losing the heat. So, yep, you just let it soak. Come in, agitate it, and you just play that game back and forth. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this in here. I don't want to chase it. And then again, if it falls, I'll be chasing it. That would be fine. All right, I got it leaned against the side. Let's go with that. All right. So what you want to do is periodically make sure you come in, in here and you're agitating things. And so I've got our test in here again. That's the 40 millimeter grenade pouch. Um, which is the desert DPM. So um, we've got good, good solid warm here, um, and it's nowhere near boiling. But you can see a couple things you'll notice is that the inside um, PVC nylon is not changing at all because the dye won't have an effect on that. But you can also see that the um, that the desert is definitely, definitely taking the dye. So that's a good thing. Now here's where we get the opportunity to tweak it out. Don't trust this yet either because you need to let it dry out. And when it dries out, you'll see that it dries lighter than this. But the other thing is that Les and I were noticing, hey man, this has got a lot of brown. It's only halfway through its uh, you know 20 minute dyeing process. And it's got a lot of brown taking. This is what I was talking about earlier that you've, and we might want to tweak our, um, our recipe a bit. And, um, and that's what I was talking about is that when it comes to this, you've got to be really careful and be willing to play with your recipe. Um, and when you use that brown, you can use so little brown and it'll dominate it. It's, there's something about the chemical composition of that brown that the fibers just, it just soaks into them. And so it doesn't take a lot of brown, trust me. Anytime you want brown, use 
a tenth of what you're thinking it's going to take, okay? Um, and because it really does kind of dominate. And it may be that we want to add some more Kelly green to this and uh, maybe even a little more dark green and then dilute it with a little more water. So that may end up, you know, I'll wait. I'm not making any decision yet. And I don't want to do it while I have my test uh, going underway. So let's just give it another 10 minutes and see where we are. All right, so it's been right at 20 minutes. Uh, what we want to do is go ahead and take it out. And again, we've got good constant heat coming out of here. Oh, yeah, that's nice and warm, but not too. Again, it, more dangerous is to get it too hot. So it's not boiling. It's not even close to boiling. But you can see that's definitely taken. So what I want to do here is go ahead and get some dye on my fingers, shake that out. I'm going to put it on this plastic lid, and we're going to put it right next to it. Now, this is going to, it, it will dry, as it dries it will go lighter. How much lighter? It depends on the material, it depends on your dye, all these other things, it depends. But as you can see, and we can go in here and spread this out, as you can see, that is quite a bit. You, you look, look at the difference between these two, it's pretty stark. Okay, right? So here you go. Definitely, definitely it took, and so that's that. Now I'm going to do one more because I think that looks far too brown. you agree with that? I totally concur. Yeah, it looks far too brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, adjust our dye a bit. And this is what I say. This is why you want to do a test. It's a perfect example. There's nothing wrong with this. Looks fantastic. We'll, uh, and again, it's got lots of good greens in there. But I'll tell you what, this part of the um, desert pattern is turning into just a, it's, it's really grabbing that brown. And so, like I said, let's, uh, let's try that into a green. The straight nylon, this piece here, that's the green I want. But when I look at it compared, and I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, when I look at the strap here, I'm concerned that this is way too brown. Straps came out perfect, but the rest of it just came out way too brown. So, again, I'm going to adjust our dye, and then we'll do one more test run before I start throwing things in here. All right, so we just pulled this out of the vat, still a little wet, definitely more wet than this one, which is still not dry, so neither of these dry. Remember, they are going to dry a little lighter, but you can see right away, like for real comparison, look at these two. You see how this is a very, it is an olive drab, but it's far more drab. Drab means brown inside the olive. And um, here we added more green to it, and you can see the difference, and so this is what the rest of it should dry like, and this one is what this will dry like. But look at the difference between those two. You say, well, it's just a shade off. And it is. And, and in fact, it is. But there's just a little too much brown in here for our taste. Maybe your area and your preference is for the browners. Just keep that in mind. But clearly, <laughs> neither one of them looks like they used to look like, right? This is the, the desert dispersed pattern material camouflage. And so this is writ dye with a very drab olive green and a more military green or a matte uh, green is what was often called, OG107 matte green. So this is what we want, that's what we're going to do with the rest of the set. Alright, so we took 11 large to small and including medium, we took 11 more pouches and we shoved them all into this um, vat at once agitated it, starts taking the uh, green very, very well. Couple little things. One, just a little bit of a trick. You see what I've done is I've filled these with water and put this other aluminum can just to make sure everything stays submerged. Now I want it submerged, but I'm, I'm not pressing the holy crap out of it because of course you want the water to flow and to, you know, the dye to actually take to the material. So don't press too hard, but we definitely have some pressure here going on and that's just a little t uh, uh, tip, I guess, to, uh, you know, to keep everything below the surface of the dyed water. So that's one thing. Second thing is to remember, I had that at a really good, wonderful heat. But as Les and I added 11 more pieces of, you know, uh, gear in there, that naturally is going to cool the water. So whereas we were doing about 15 minutes on that other pouch, here we'll double that. And I'm going to come back and agitate it about once every 10 minutes or so. And we're going to let this actually set for about 30 at this nice warm temperature. All right, Baldrick, how did my cunning plan work out? Well, we started out with the Osprey load-bearing system in Desert DPM. The goal was to make it OD green. Did we succeed? Let's check it out. Well, yes, I think we did. This looks very OD. 
It is definitely not bright desert tan like it used to be. This equipment is now at a condition it can be used in a heavily vegetated woodland environment. Let's take a look at the items up close so you can see how the pattern came out or was subdued and how the different materials reacted with the dye. Okay, the first pouch we're going to look at is the utility pouch. This is a pretty versatile pouch. It can hold a USGI one quart canteen and just about anything that size that you need to carry. Uh, I went into the uh, attributes of the pouch in our previous video on this system, so no need to go over it again. But as we can see here, the material dyed an OD green color. Uh, at eye level, as you can see, you can still detect the DPM pattern beneath it, but when you step way back, the pattern blends in so much, this is essentially OD green. Now as you can see here, the strap that uh, whole interfaces with the buckle for keeping the lid closed so your contents don't come out, that didn't take the uh, die too well. Now conversely on the back, the straps used for weaving the molly webbing, as you can see, and even the tag, took the die pretty well. Came out pretty good. There is one exception though, let's go into that. Alright, and I think you can see what's going on right there, we got a big stain. And how did that stain occur? Well, <clears throat> this was one of the few pouches that I'd actually used out of the system before dying. Uh, when you get this system from Vero Stalaka, at least when I got it from them, it came with 13 pouches and almost all of them were brand new and unissued. Uh, I used one of the pouches at a competition to carry magazines, got it covered in mud, just wiped off the mud and called it good. I probably should have thrown it in the washing machine and let it do its thing because as you can see, it picked up a stain that affected the color of the dye. Now another thing interesting about this is how the dye interacted is didn't do much for the front strap here but pull it open and take a look. It got that uh, Velcro really good and the liner and drawstring or the drawstring liner, excuse me, the liner itself picked up the dye. This was tan colored. Uh, it was the color of the drawstring here, which surprisingly didn't pick up the color of the dye. Overall though, the pouch is eminently usable. Uh, another great example of variance in dye is here on the SA-80 ammunition pouch. The pattern comes through a whole lot more clear than any other pouch I did in the batch. I don't know if there's a variance in the material they used to manufacture this, whatever, but the pattern comes through a bit more here because these pouches were all dyed at the same time. This medical pouch had me slightly worried until we rinsed everything off because there were big green splotches all over the front here where you can write down information. And I thought that might have rendered that portion unusable, but no, after the rinsing, it came out just fine. Let's move on to the Osprey vest itself. It's the heart of the system. Uh, as good as the pouches came out, if you've got nothing to mount them to, kind of doesn't matter, does it? All right, we're going to start out here on the back. Why? Because it gives us the most to talk about. Now, you will see a big contrast here. Our first contrast here, so here's a little bit of the side panel. Yeah, it came out really good. Here you can see where they put strips of material for camouflage between the straps of Molly. Came out really good. The mesh really didn't change color. I'm not exactly sure what it's made of, but whatever it is, it didn't take the dye. It's probably some man-made fiber like polyester or something. Whatever it is, it didn't take the dye as well. Now, I don't think this is a detriment for two reasons. One, only the back panel shows this much mess. This here is actually internal panel that's showing through. That's against your body. Nobody's going to see that. On your back, you're probably going to have a hydration system or you're going to be carrying a pack which is going to cover up all this mesh and take away that problem you have of this offset color possibly showing up. Now we've moved over to the front of the vest. As we can see here, we have a much more green front that we're presenting. And that's going to get covered in pouches of the same thing, so it's going to blend in really well. A couple things to note here. This is the internal vest. This is against your back. That's not visible to the front. Okay? The zippers do not take the dye at all. So they're going to still be that color. However, I don't think that's going to be a very big detriment. Uh, the pattern comes through, but I can tell you, get four or five paces away, this looks like a solid OD vest. Now for compare and contrast, on the left is the Osprey load bearing system that was in Desert DPM dyed to OD. On the right 
is the Dutch modular vest. Essentially the same thing, just a much darker shade of OD with EPM camouflage webbing on it. So you have a compare and contrast from when it went from being desert to now it's uh, an OD color, but it's not the darkest OD, it's a bit lighter. Could it be darker? Yeah, but I think this is going to work well in the environment. Obviously, this screams out for a field test. And side by side here, we have on the left a Dutch utility pouch in DPM. Over on the right, we have the dyed desert DPM, just to show a compare and contra contrast between the colors. All right, so here's our dyed desert DPM vest against a DPM uniform desert type. So you can see the contrast of the new color. Uh, Alright, we've been doing some comparing and contrasting of Desert DPM versus dyed Desert DPM. Let's have a look and see how this Osprey vest looks on a woodland camo pattern. Alright, <clears throat> this cries out for a field test and we'll work on that and get that out to you as soon as we can. Uh, okay, so you've seen how this dyed vest looks against the undyed British DPM camouflage. Here's how it looks against OD. Bear in mind, OD comes in a lot of shades. It's a, it's a, a name that covers a wide variety. Uh, this happens to be True Spec OD. There are darker brands out there. There are lighter brands out there. But one thing this cries out for is a field test. So here in the spring or summer, we'll get out into a heavily wooded environment where there's greens everywhere, seeing how well this blends in, and we'll get that video to you as soon as we can. We'd like to thank you for tuning into this edition of Pegasus Test. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and tune in for future gear test videos.